We are about to take the Lord's Supper this coming Lord's Day. Ah, it is such a wonderful time that we get to share together. Really, one of only two pictures the Lord has given to us of the gospel. One being baptism, the other being the Lord's Supper, where we get to act out the gospel, the offering up of Jesus' body and blood to the Father on your behalf and mine. Ah, what a beautiful picture. And the Bible gives us some warnings regarding how to participate in that picture of the Lord's Supper. And in preparation for this Lord's Day, I think providentially we have this passage that is given to us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the last part, which is our Bible reading today from the schedule that I presume you have. It's all about the Lord's Supper, but there's a warning here. And so using that warning, I want to encourage you and help us to prepare for the Lord's Supper coming up this weekend. Verse 29, anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. And later on, it tells us to examine ourselves. All right. So some people take this and say, okay, obviously there's a warning. Obviously there's a warning. And he says, examine ourselves. And so let's look back at our week. Hmm, have we behaved? Have we been growing? Have we dotted all our I's and crossed all our T's? Morally speaking, have we been nicer to my wife, to my husband? Did I I I refrain from kicking the cat or yelling at the dog? Yes. I show my preference here, even though I love cats as well. Anyway, is that what's going on? No. And as one pastor said, is the Lord's Supper all about examining ourselves? No. No. Then what is this warning about? That's what I want to share with you today. This is what I understand this passage to say. Not everyone sees it this way, okay? This is one of those instances that are included in Pastor Paul's idiosyncrasies, I guess. But one of the convictions that I do have and feel strongly enough that I can share this with you, knowing that I am most likely in the minority. But let's just read the passage. What does it say? Anyone who eats and drinks without discerning the body eats and drinks judgment on himself. The issue is the body. What is the body? We already saw it in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. We will see it in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. And throughout Paul's writings, the body is the body of Jesus Christ, the church. The church. That's why the whole context is that people are dividing up around the table. You eat over here. I'm going to eat over there. I have this group of people. You have that group of people. And when it comes to the Lord's Supper, where we're celebrating the one bodiness that we share in Jesus, if you are not discerning the body, if you are not recognizing the oneness that we share, if you're going to be putting up with the divisions that we have, if you're not even willing to pray about something you have against somebody else in the congregation, then really can it be said that you are ready to participate in the Lord's Supper that proclaims the proclaims the oneness that Jesus' cross has accomplished for us. Oneness with God, oneness with one another. What is it? To discern the body? It is to recognize the oneness we share. And if we don't recognize the oneness that we share, the Bible says, if we're going against the oneness that we have, the Bible says, We drink judgment. We eat and we drink, but that becomes rather a curse than a blessing. Now, the Lord's Supper is the most, one of the most blessed experiences, the blessed things that we can do together. But why would we want, why would we risk turning that blessing into a curse? When we fail, when we fall, even the Lord's Supper, there is grace for that. 
But at times when we are harboring judgment in our heart and then insist on taking the Lord's Supper for appearance sake or whatever other wrong reason, the Bible says that can bring on the loving discipline of God. The discipline of God is loving. Still, it, it, it can be very painful. Well, how do you avoid that? Grow without that discipline. Grow by training. Grow by disciplining yourself. He says this, if we were to judge ourselves, we would not be judged. If we were to discipline ourselves, we will not be disciplined. If we give ourselves training, then we would not have to be trained through painful discipline. That is what is being taught here. So that is the key. To embrace the discipline, the loving discipline of God in self-discipline, in searching yourself, see if there is any animosity, any bitterness, something you are holding against somebody else in the congregation. So what do you do in the light of what I've just told you? How do you discern the body of Jesus even in preparation before you come to the table? Examine yourself. Examine your heart before the Lord. And say, Lord, search me and know my heart. See if there is any way that I'm holding bitterness towards somebody else in the body, in your body, especially in my local church. Is there somebody that I'm finding it difficult to love? My heart just doesn't go out to that person. Okay, okay, I love that person, but I don't like that person. Well, process that. and Deal with that before the Lord on your knees before you come to the Lord's table. What a wonderful opportunity to go ahead and do that, to prepare your heart, to celebrate what Jesus has already done in causing people that are so different from us to come together and worship him. And that's another thing. As you examine yourself, it doesn't have to be negative only, looking for all the ways in which I am not doing this right. No, look at the ways that you can accent the positive elements too. What a gift that we can come together from different backgrounds, multi-ethnicity, multi-ethnicities, differences in culture, and come together and celebrate the one body of Jesus that does and will extend throughout all the world and over all of time. What a gift, what a blessing. Come to the Lord's table. Come to the Lord's table. Come embracing the oneness, celebrating your participation in it through the blood of King Jesus. The blood-bought oneness, the one body, the beautiful, drop-dead gorgeous bride of King Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Help us to search our hearts. And if there's anything that we have against anyone, let us lay it down. Let us see once again, remind ourselves that you are the one that says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. It is our part and privilege on this side of heaven just to focus on being loving and being forgiving. Oh Lord, we pray since you have given us this privilege that you would allow us to live it out. Help us now to prepare our hearts to cut away all the elements of bitterness toward anybody in the body of Jesus. And also to build up and to anticipate the oneness that we share in Jesus. To thank you for our pastors. To thank you for our brothers and sisters before we even come to the Lord's table. And then when we celebrate that oneness that we share together, oh, when we wait for one another, and we come together to present ourselves before you in this God-ordained way, what a gift it will be. I look forward to that day, this coming Lord's Day, and the day we will do this face-to-face -face with you, with one another, before your throne. Ah. Longing for you, we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the throne of God above, I have a strong and perfect plea, a great high priest whose name is love. 
whoever lives and pleads for me. My name is graven on his hand. My name is written on his heart. I know that while in heaven he stands, no tongue can bid me then steep on. No tongue can bid me then steep on. When Satan tempts me to despair, and tells me of the guilt within Upward I look and see him there Who made an end of all my sin Because the sinless Savior died My sinful soul is counted free For God the just is satisfied to look on him and pardon me To look on him and pardon me Behold him there, the risen man My perfect spotless righteousness The great unchanging Savior and